Hello again. This is the second part of a two-part uh, series on calculating the maximum stresses from a pressure vessel that has a torque applied to it. In the first part of the clip, or the first clip I should say, we had a thin-walled pressure vessel. It's 200 millimeters in diameter with a wall thickness of 2 millimeters. It has a pressure of 700,000 pascals internally and there's a torque applied to the end of 5,000 newton meters. Now in the previous clip we were able to calculate the hoop stress, the longitudinal stress, and the shear stress as a result of all these pressures and loads. Now that we have those, let's use what we know to draw more circle. Now we're going to start by drawing a stress element. The stress element is right there on the uh, uh, pressure vessel. Now it could be anywhere, but I drew it right there for clarity. And here's what it's going to look like. There's the stress element. This is just this expanded out. Your stress in the x direction, that's the longitudinal stress, and that's 17.325 megapascals, and it's the same in this direction. Stress in the y direction is the hoop stress. Now that's the stress that makes the tube want to get bigger. Longitudinal stress is the stress that makes it want to get longer. So this is the hoop stress which is in the y direction of these axes because this is x and this is y. And that's 34.65 megapascals. Oops. Same there as it is there. And every stress element can have shear stresses on it. Now, here's, on this face we call that tau xy. Now it's just a naming convention. But the way to remember this is this is shear stress on the x face in the y direction. Tau yx, by the way, is minus tau xy. But this is stress on the y face right here in the x direction. These two are equal and opposite because if they weren't equal and opposite, there'd be a net moment on this stress element and it would want to turn. The stress element has to be in static equilibrium. So tau xy and tau yx are equal and opposite. Now, tau xy we figured out there is 41.002 megapascals. So there you have it. There's our stress element. This is where we start in order to draw more circle. Now I have these numbers written down here and we'll use those. I have to erase this now to make room for my uh, more circle. Now, if you remember, Mohr's circle isn't drawn on geometric axes, it's drawn on stress axes. Mohr's insight was to notice that if you plot the equations for transforming stresses on a sigma tau axis, you get a circle. So, in an age where there was no computer, there was no uh, electric, electronic calculator, this allowed you to calculate maximum normal and maximum shear stresses using a compass and a ruler graphically. And that was a big improvement. So let's draw this. Let's draw these axes. There's sigma and there's tau. And my computer's about ready to shut down on me. It keeps wanting to restart for some reason. Okay, so let's start drawing what we know here. We knew that sigma x is that value right there, so let's draw that. These are kind of arbitrary scales I'm going to make up here. But that's 17.325 megapascals. Now, since I know that the hoop stress is twice the longitudinal stress, I know that this has to be half of that, or that this distance here and that distance here have to be the same. So I'm going to use that. And this has to be 34.65. So there you go. There's sigma x, and there's sigma y, which is also the longitudinal and the hoop stress. Now, the other thing I need to know is my shear stresses. Well, if that's sigma x, then uh, my shear stress has got to be up about there. Have this axis quite to scale. It's going to go 
to run out of room over here too. So let's let's just draw this. So that's going to be tau x y up to there. Now, since tau x y and tau y x are equal and opposite, then tau y x has to go down about that far. Uh, I see this on the. I guess I got it here. There's tau y x. All right. Now, the, the uh, next thing I'm going to need to know is where the mean stress is. I need to know where these two points are going to cross. The mean stress is the average of sigma x and sigma y. So sigma x plus sigma y over 2 is 17.325 plus 34.65 divided by 2, and that turns out to be 25.998, I guess, 988. Okay. So there we have it. So that's this distance right here. Now I know I, this is bad form to do this, but there you go. There's 25.988 megapascals. So I've got everything I need to know now. On my, on my graph, and it's time now to start drawing uh, a circle out of this. So I know the circle is going to be centered right there. Right? The circle is always centered on the uh, sigma axis, never off the axis. All we're really trying to do with more circle is figure out where the center has to be and what the radius is. So there's the center. Now, I need to find, I'm going to draw my my stress element over here again. Here's my stress element. I want to draw uh, the first point to be the, the uh, represented, representing the x face. So that's going to be this normal stress and that shear stress. Well that normal stress right there and that shear stress cross right there. So that's the x face. And the y face is way down here. It's this, there's sigma y, and there's tau y x. So I think I'm out of the, this, the uh, shot here, but there you go. So the next thing I need to do is draw the radius. Now I know where the center is, and I know what the radius is, pretty much. I know graphically what the radius is. It would be helpful if I knew numerically what the radius was. Well, the radius, I want to draw it this way, that's 41.002. This distance right here is my mean stress minus my stress in the x direction. And that turns out to be 8.662. And if I use uh, the Pythagorean theorem, I'll find out that my radius is 41.908 megapascals. So let me put that right there. And clear this out. Okay. Now I'm kind of running short on room here, but here's what I've got. I've got the radius of the circle and the center of the circle. So now it's just geometry. If I rotate this up to there, that number right there is tau max, and that equals the radius, and that equals 41.908 megapascals. The other thing I might want to know is sigma max. Well, sigma max is going to be the mean plus the radius, because although I don't have enough room to do it here, if I take this radius and I rotate it all the way over there, it's actually going to wind up about there on this screen. Um, Sigma max equals sigma bar plus the radius. If we do, if we add those two numbers together, we get 67.895 megapascals. Okay, last thing I might want to know is sigma min, the minimum value of the normal stress. Well, we'll do the exact opposite here. We'll start right here, you know, the, the center and the radius, and just rotate this down. 
find out where this point crosses the sigma axis again. That is sigma min equals sigma bar minus the radius. And if we do that calculation, it comes out to minus 15.92 megapascals. So just to uh, go back over what we've done, we started out with a pressure vessel that had a torque on it. We calculated the longitudinal hoop stress and shear stress based on the loads. Used those numbers to draw more circle and found the maximum shear stress, the maximum normal stress, and the minimum normal stress using more circle.